Hello class, it's Miss Arians here. We are doing 5.3 and 5.4 lecture today together. Um, just because they're smaller sections, we're trying to get through the information. Uh, our learning targets for today is you should be able to identify internal and external factors that regulate cell division. And also you should be able to explain in term or you should be able to explain cancer in terms of the cell cycle. For 5.4, you should be able to compare and contrast binary fission and mitosis, as well as be able to explain how some eukaryotics reproduce through my mitosis. So let's talk about the regulation of the cell cycle. A cell cycle regulation is necessary for healthy growth. Regulation is just how the cell cycle happens on a regular day-to-day -day basis. There are several internal and external factors that help regulate cell division. Some external factors include physical and chemical signals. Um, cells will release chemical signals that tell other cells to grow. For example, we do have the growth factors, which are proteins that stimulate cell uh, division. These growth factors bind to receptors and activate specific genes to trigger cell growth. So that's going to start cell growth. Um, in general, cells grow and divide in response to a combination of different growth factors. It's never just one growth factor, it might be a couple different growth factors. Uh, a good example is uh, the playmates which are the sticky fragments of bone marrow cells and these form clots to help you stop bleeding. These plylates um, store types of growth factors that help your body repair wounds by triggering the growth of many different cell types. So they'll actually trigger your blood to start clotting and then your, skil your skin cells to start forming and all of that stuff. Um, most mammal cells form a single layer in a culture dish and stop dividing once they touch other cells. And here is an example of a normal cell growth. So we have a culture, and this is in a petri dish, um, and these are the cells that grow, and they just keep, say we start with one cell, and they just keep growing and growing and growing until they're all touching. Okay, there are two important internal factors, and that's kinesis and cyclins. Kinesis is an enzyme that, when activated, transfers a phospho phosphate group from one molecule to a specific target molecule. Um, and cyclins are proteins that are rapidly made and destroyed at certain points in the cell cycle. These two factors help a cell advance in different stages of the cell cycle when they bind to one another. External factors will trigger internal factors which affect the cell cycle. So it will all start with the outside and go towards the inside and what the body has to um, stop or make happen. Apotheosis is a program cell death. Um, it is a normal feature in healthy organisms. Um, it's caused by cell production of self-destructive enzymes, and this occurs in the development of infants. It is a kind of a fairly new thing that they've been that they found out about. Um, one example is that in early stages of development, human embryos have webbed um, fingers or webbing in between their fingers here, and then also in their toes. Uh, before the baby is born, these cells typically go through apop apoptosis, um, and then most babies are born with little webbing between their fingers and toes afterwards. So it's actually self-destructing cells that go through and break your fingers and your toes apart when you're embryos. Um, like I said, it's kind of a lot of questions still remain about this process, but it is something new and kind of exciting and different. Um, cell division is uncontrolled in cancer. Many of you know what cancer is. Uh, okay, cancer cells form disorganized clumps called tumors. 
Here is a great diagram. This is also in your book as well. So we have normal cells all around. We have the cancer cell here. And then they just start to f um, divide. You can see the cytokinesis right happening right here. This looks like that almost the telophase part right there. Cytokinesis looks like it just happened here and here. So kind of kind of see the different formations and then over here we have it again and it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it starts passing through the bloodstream. So benign tumors are going to remain clustered and can be removed. Right here is a benign tumor for right now. And then malignant tumors is a tumor that's metastasized or break away and can form more tumors. So getting into the bloodstream and these cells are going to go into the bloodstream and start replicating and reproducing and forming more tumors. Cells do not carry out necessary functions. Cancer cells come from normal cells with damaged genes involved in the cell cycle regulation. So here we have our petri dish again and then we have cancer cells growing. Carcinogens are substances that promote cancer. We all know what those are um, from s cigarette smoke to, um, to, I don't know, people pretty much, they're saying everything can cause cancer nowadays. So uh, standard cancer treatments typically care both can kill both cancerous and healthy cells. Uh, the two main types of um, treatments are um, chemo as well as radiation. Um, they're both going to kill the healthy cells as well as um, the cancer cells. They're looking at photon therapy as well, which is actually shooting protons into the body to actually blow up cancer cells. It is a process that's still being tested, um, but it's working its way up. Here's skin cancer, and this picture is also in your book as well but that's a mole turning into skin cancer. The next concept, this is five, I know it says 5.3 up here, but this is 5.4 lecture. We're gonna talk about um, cell division more, as well as asexual reproduction and binary fission. Um, binary fission is very similar to mitosis, but it's gonna be um, taking place in prokaryotic cells, so bacteria. Asexual reproduction is a, s a creation of offspring from a single parent. So sexual reproduction is when you have two parents and you were produced by sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is when you only have one parent. Uh, binary fusion produces two daughter cells um, genetically identical to the parent. So that's how it's the same with mitosis. You're going to have uh, two daughter cells that come from a parent cell. Binary fission occurs in prokaryotic, so that means bacteria. We have bacteria right here growing, and it's the same process as mitosis. You have cytokinesis. The thing that's majorly different is the DNA. Um, DNA in prokaryotics we know is circular, and eukaryotics like us, it's linear, so it's a little bit different on how they um, the DNA replicates. Environment determines um, what form of reproduction is more most advantageous. So what is the best reproduction? The environment takes care of that for us. Asexual reproduction is um, an advantage in a consistently favorable conditions and then sexual reproduction is an advantage in changing conditions. Um, bacteria will reproduce faster and a lot, there'll be a lot more if um, cell division, I mean, if the conditions are always stable, so the same temperature, same amount of oxygen, all that, bacteria is going to grow a lot faster. Whereas, like, our reproduction, it's going to take the same amount of our cells to form and stuff like that when we're babies. It's going to be nine months. Whereas some bacteria, it'll take 10 days to form a million bacteria. So um, as long as the uh, conditions are the same and remains constant, then you'll have a higher rate of asexual reproduction. Some eukaryotics reproduce through mitosis. 
Um, budding forms a new organism from a small projection growing on the surface of a parent. And think of a plant. If you have a plant and you take a piece off of it and you put that in water, it'll start to grow its own roots and then you'll have two plants. So that's budding. So here we have budding and it's coming from the other plant. Fragmentation is splitting of the parent into pieces that grow into a new organism. A lot of times flatworms do that um, and starfish and sponges. If you break off a piece of that sponge, it'll grow a whole new huge sponge. Or if you cut the flatworm in half, it'll grow two flatworms. Um, vegetative reproduction forms a new plant from the modification of a stem or underground structure of the parent plant and that happens with potatoes and strawberries and all that stuff so from these stems other plants will be produced that is a lecture for 5.3 and 5.4 um, stay tuned for 5.5 have a great day